These are the five things that I wish I knew as a beginner pool player. Number five, don't focus on aiming systems. You might think that being good at pool means being good at math and geometry, and that if you just knew the right aiming system that you would never miss. But there are two problems with that logic. The first problem is that eventually as you get better as a player, you begin to use side spin. This adds deflection, swerve, and spin induced throw, but even without side spin, you still have to deal with cut induced throw, which itself changes based on the speed and the vertical spin of the cue ball. So there is really no perfect aiming system. The second problem, well, let's say that there is some aiming system that gives you the perfect aim every time. As a new player, your stroke isn't accurate enough for it to even matter. Even more important, if your stroke isn't accurate, you'll never know if it was your stroke or your aim to blame. Imagine you miss a ball. Did you aim correct and give a bad stroke? Did you aim wrong and have a good stroke? Even if you make a ball, did you aim wrong and have a bad stroke and end up making the ball just by sheer luck? Or did you aim well and stroke well? Without a consistent stroke, you never really know the answer to these questions, which is going to impede your improvement, which takes us into point number four, focus on your fundamentals. If you really want to improve quickly, the best investment of time you can make is by working on your fundamentals, stance, grip, bridge, shot routine. And if you're not entirely sure what all that entails, I've got an entire course on the fundamentals available on the World of Pool and Billiards app. It's basically the accumulation of all of my knowledge of through the years that I played and the number of books that I've read. It's everything that I know that you need to know in an easy to access format. Essentially, the main takeaway from the fundamentals course is that you need an accurate, consistent, and straight stroke to be a good player. And in pool, all you need to do that is master one movement, the pendulum swing of the arm. But that's not easy and you certainly have to have great fundamentals to get consistently set up so that that's all you have to do. What separates beginners from mid-level, from advanced, from professional is fundamentals. Number three, stroke through the cue ball. This is something that I see pretty often, even though this is a very common piece of advice. So let's take a second and discuss where I think it gets a little bit off the rails. In my opinion, this is commonly misconstrued as you need an exaggerated follow through to get action, aka spin, onto the cue ball. But this really isn't the case. In fact, if taken this way, it can lead to a bad habit of intentional elbow drop even when it's not necessary. Now, there's nothing really inherently wrong with elbow drop so long as it's natural, but if you start trying to force an exaggerated follow through by dropping your elbow, you risk mistiming it causing the tip of the cue ball to hit higher than you anticipated. It's quite common to see this whenever players go for a big draw shot and hit the ball hard. The elbow drops slightly before hitting the cue ball, reducing the draw you get because the tip hits higher, and you get players that say, I just can't draw the cue ball. Instead, I think the advice should be stroke through the cue ball as if it's not even there. In other words, don't anticipate contact with the cue ball. Let me give an example of something that I occasionally struggle with in my game so that you can get a better idea of what I mean. This is me setting up the same shot twice. On one of these, I make it, and the other one I miss. If you look closely, on the one that I miss, there's a bit of right hand spin, but how did it get there? Sometimes, just prior to contact with the cue ball, I have this habit of slightly tensing up my hand. It's almost like my hand's getting ready for the impact. But let's take a little bit closer look at what this does to my tip's location at the cue ball. Here, I'm actually tensing up my hand just a little bit, and you can see what it does to the tip of the cue. It moves it down and to the right. Now imagine if I'm stroking a ball and I do this just prior to contact. I'm gonna end up hitting a little bit lower and with a little bit of right, the same amount of right that caused me to miss that ball. These are the type of small little details you're gonna to have to work out of your game if you ever wanna reach that higher level of play. But to finish off this point, don't tense up in anticipation of contact with the cue ball and be sure to stroke all the way through it. Which brings us to number two, always smooth, never jerky. Sorry, Jack Lynx, but this is something that I see from new players all the time. A very quick backstroke and a quick transition to forward swing. I think this manifests itself from a lack of confidence in one stroke. Instead of trusting their fundamentals, it's like they're trying to quickly get their shot off while they're perfectly aligned. This unfortunately has a bit of the opposite effect as the quick jerky movement typically ends up destabilizing their stroke which decreases their accuracy. If your stance is stable and your body remains still, it doesn't matter how long your backswing and transition and forward swing takes. You'll still hit the cue ball at the same location that you started at. Another thing I want to discuss about this point is whenever players try to put a lot of power into a shot, it's very common to see a breakdown of their fundamentals. The primary cause of this is jerky movements, trying to get too much speed into the cue too quickly. The better approach when shooting a shot that needs a lot of power is to use a longer bridge. This gives you more room to accelerate the cue, which means you can accelerate the cue slower and engage less muscle, resulting in a smoother, more stable, and accurate stroke. And finally, let's get into number one, 
stay humble and seek knowledge. My final piece of advice is to always seek to learn more about the game. My advice, spending $20 to $60 on a good book is going to do much more for your game than a $1,000 pool queue. Or spend $100 or so on some lessons from a great player. Some players will teach you even if you just buy them a beer. Also, you could literally just download the World of Pool and Billiards app and it has free to read lessons on all the basics of pool. You gotta deal with some ads, but if you wanna get rid of them, you can go premium. But from aiming, stance, just read through it. Try out some of the drills and if you like it, consider getting the premium subscription, which helps support me, this channel, my business, and eventually taking this on full time. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.